So today I decided to talk about Ed Sheeran and hopefully I don't make any mistakes, fingers crossed. So let's talk music. Ed Sheeran came out with two songs last week and if you don't know, what rock do you live under? Seriously. So we're going to talk about them today. I know some people have mixed opinions about Shape of You. I have to admit at first I was a little bit uh, iffy about it, but I'm starting to warm up to it. But yeah, so we'll see. But Castle of the Hill, as soon as I heard it, I knew I was going to fall in love with it. And I did. I fell deeply in love with Castle on the Hill. And I'm thinking it's probably going to be my favorite on the album, although I haven't even heard the album yet, and I already know it's probably going to be out there. First off, I want to say how amazing it is that Ed Sheeran has come back. He left December 13th in 2015, and he was gone from social media, like Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, like he was off the map off the radar it was amazing like kudos to him for doing that I don't think I could ever do that although I should I think everyone should do that but I'm amazed and then he comes back exactly one year later and posts about divide boy boy you know what that was gonna do to everyone you knew I'm smart on you I like a little bit suspicious that December 13th is Taylor Swift's birthday. I don't know if that's just a coincidence, but there's still a little part of me deep inside my heart that believes that Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift belong together, and hopefully they do date at some point. Hopefully, there would be, it would make my heart soar so high. But yeah, we'll see. I'm excited. I want to see what's on the album. Like, like, I'm, I'm not prepared. Anyways, I was not prepared for these two songs, so let's get down to business. Okay, so first off, I'm going to talk about Shape of You first, because I could go on about Castle of the Hill forever. So, Shape of You. Okay, so I asked my friends, what do you think about the song, and what do you not like about it? Or like, out of the two, which one do you like the most? Everyone's like Castle of the Hill, like, no one has said Shape of You. And it's mostly because they think it's a degrading song, and it, like, it's dis disrespectful to women, and sometimes, like, you gotta look for a deeper meaning, but I think it's also because I like to analyze it. And I like to look for the deeper meaning. But I think Shape of You has a deeper meaning. I know it does. I know it's Sheeran. And he would not release a song like this and have it not have a deeper meaning than it is. It don't take any Ed Sheeran song to face value. Ever. But yeah. So let's analyze the lyrics. So the first part, if you haven't listened to the song... Uh, is goes, the club isn't the best place to find a lover, so the bar is where I go. So, that makes sense. Uh, I know me as someone who is always looking for someone, like, I'm always, like, dating or whatever. I don't go to the club. Why, why would you, like, that's not where you're going to find your soulmate. Most likely, I've never heard of anyone finding their soulmate at the club. At the bar, maybe not either, but more likely, you're more likely to sit down and have a conversation with someone at the bar instead of just being like at the club, be like, ums, 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 like music blaring and you can't talk to anyone. Like, so it makes sense. That part I agree with. Me and my friends at the table doing shots, drinking fast and then we talk slow. You come over and start up a conversation with just me. And trust, give it a chance now. So basically, Ed's hanging out with his friends, we're talking, drinking, and then this girl comes over. They want to have a conversation. So he's like, oh, okay, well, I'll take my chance. Okay, so then it's like, take my hand, stop. Put Ban the Man on the jukebox. And we start to dance. And now I'm singing. So they're like dancing on like the little dance floor. They're like, he's starting to get into her. You know, like he he's grooving it. Like, I... I'm sure you've been in that place where 
you've gone to the bar and there's someone cute and you're like, oh, like maybe I'll talk to them. But like you wait a little bit to let the drinks sit in, settle in, and then you go over and you start dancing. It, it's automatic. It happens. Whatever. So then Ed is saying, girl, you know I want your love. Your love was handmade for somebody like me. Come on now, follow my lead. I may be crazy, but don't mind me. So how I interpreted that is that he's looking for someone. He wants someone to love him back and, like, to love them, like, give them all the love that he could give, like, that he was born with, basically. And he's like, oh, take my lead. Like, I'll guide you, blah, blah, blah. Um, call me crazy. I'm I'm falling for you. Like, I'm crazy in love type of thing. Like, Beyonce and Jay-Z, crazy in love. Um, and then he's going to start singing because um, it's going to hit. And, or, or whatever. But then she, she, he's like, don't mind me, though. Like, I might be falling. Don't mind me. Just continue what you're doing. And then she says, boy, let's not talk too much. Grab on my waist and put that body on me. Come on now. Follow my lead. Come on. Come on now. Mm, so... This is where I'm like, he's not taking advantage of her at all. He wants a relationship. He wants a deeper connection. And she's like, uh uh, mm -mm, not tonight, boy. I just want to go home and go to bed with you. Basically, is what she's saying. To say it in like a PG 13 way. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think that Ed's being degrading or disrespectful to woman in this at all he's basically saying sometimes it happens you go to the bar and sometimes they just want to hook up they don't want a relationship it happens it's literally real life like it happens so much okay so then he uh it goes on it's like i'm in love with the shape of you we push and pull like a magnet do obviously that's about them hooking up Although my heart is falling, too, I'm in love with your body. So he wants to fall. Like, his head and his heart is all like, oh, yeah, I want to, like, fall for this girl. But I don't really know her. I don't have that deeper connection. So far, all we've done is, like, dance. We've talked a little bit. But mostly it's, like, a hookup. So he's like, yeah, I'm in love with your body because I don't know anything else about you right now. But I wouldn't mind. And then... Uh, last night you were in my room, and now my bed sheets smell like you. Every day discovering something new. I'm in love with your body. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I. Which, that's my favorite part. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I, oh, I. But yeah, so basically he's like, I like her enough that, like, in the, in the next morning he's like, oh, my bed still smells like her. And like, you know, like, he likes that. He likes how it's lingering. It's making him think. And he wants... He wants something more. But, like, so far, he's just in love with the body. Um, and then, like, the next verse is, One week in, we let the story begin. So, we're going out on our first date. So, a week after the initial meetup and hook up, they're going on their first date. So, Ed's like, oh, it's going somewhere. Our story is starting to begin. So, he doesn't think the hook, like, the story began with the hook up. You see? You gotta read between the lines with Ed. You and me are thrifty, so go all you can eat, fill up your bag, and I fill up the plate. We talk for hours and hours about the sweet and the sour. So that part is like a little bit like, like dry. Like it's simple, it's clean cut. That's basically what it is. They're eating, they're out for dinner. They go to like an all buffet. All you can eat buffet, basically. Um, and then, this is like the more interesting part. So it's like they're talking blah, blah, blah for hours and how your family is doing okay. So they're talking about family. So it's starting to become a real conversation. They're starting to get to know each other on that deeper level. And then they leave. They get into the taxi. And then they're kissing in the back seat. They drive, tell the driver, put that radio on. And then he, Ed, again, is saying, Girl, you know I want your love. Your love was handmade for somebody like me. 
come on now, follow my lead. I may be crazy, but don't mind me. So like, I may be falling for you again. Like, I love the conversations that we're having. Like, I want to get to know you better. But then she's like, no, again, like, let's not talk too much. Like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk more. I literally just want to go home and go to bed with you. So she's the one stopping the interaction. She's the one being like, nah, like, I'm not having it. Like, I just, you know, she doesn't want a relationship. Sometimes that happens, you know, like, that's the reality of this day and age that you want to have a connection with someone you like long for it but usually the other person is like "Mm, I'm not looking for a serious relationship I'm just looking for some fun I'm young I don't want to have fun I know Ed's like about the same age as me so that's probably the same feelings towards dating where you want something real but like usually the other person It's a little bit hesitant, and they're like, nah, nah. And then, like, what are you left with? You're literally just going to be in love with a body. Castle on the Hill. Okay, so this song is amazing. My one friend interpreted it a little bit different than I did. She uh, thought it was, reminded her of our childhood uh, and, like, our neighborhood, which it makes sense. Like, I, I do see where she was coming from, and I listened to it that way as well. But I also listened to it as, like, he's in love with someone. It's a little bit mixed emotions, like, because he's talking about his family in the beginning. And then he's talking about his best friends. But then he's also talking about having a kiss. So, you know, it's, like, a little bit of a mixture of, like, family, friends, romance and like maybe this is a song about how it all ties together which would be even more amazing but I absolutely love the way he sings this as well it's just it's perfect and like the feeling that I get when I listen to it like the whole I'm going to go home and whatnot like driving down country lanes I live in the country like in a small country town so it brings me back you know like it just it the setting like I I feel what Ed's feeling in the song and it's amazing but yeah let's get to it so when I was six years old I broke my leg I was running from my brother and his friends and I tasted the sweet perfume of the mountain grass as I rolled down the way he writes is just so amazing inspiring it's this is like a masterpiece I'm not sure how it does it but he does it with most of his songs and the way that this is written is beautiful I was younger then take me back to when I found my heart and I broke it here made friends and lost them through the years and I've not seen the roaring hills in so long I know I've grown and I can't wait to go home. So how nostalgic is that? Everyone can relate to that. No matter where you go to school, if you lived in a city, in a town, in the country, everyone has that feeling of leaving. And then being like, I haven't been there in so long, but I can't wait to go back home. You know, you have that feeling. And then I'm on my way. Driving at 90 down those country lanes, singing to Tiny Dancer. I miss the way you make me feel, and it's real. We watch the sunset over the castle on the hill. So this is about that raw emotion. It's real. He felt it. He knows it was real. And I like the little nod to Elton John. I absolutely love Tiny Dancer. And I could literally picture myself in a car going 90 down a country lane blasting Tiny Dancer and just singing at the top of my lungs in a way I that would make me feel is amazing. I can connect to this in so many ways. 15 years old and smoking hand-rolled cigarettes, running from the law through the backfields and getting drunk with my friends. Had my first kiss on a Friday night. I don't reckon that I did it right. So he's talking about when he was like a teenager and like What they would do, like, I've watched some Britain shows, mostly 
skins this pops out like how they're reckless and they're free and they're doing fun things they're experiencing life you know like they're like on a Friday night would probably be like getting drunk and having his first kiss and he's like they're running from the law like they're this is not okay but like they did it anyways you know like nothing stopped that and I love that I love how he was able to do that like I wasn't a rule breaker at all but that would be amazing to have those memories you know just be I feel like it would be amazing and then he says but I was younger then so like that was in the past that's how he acted he's not like that anymore he's older now he's grown take me back to when we found weekend jobs when we got paid we buy cheap spirits and drink them straight me and my friends have not grown up in so long oh how we've grown but I can't wait to go home so again this is like they're growing up like weekend jobs you're at that point you need a job but at that point you don't need the money that much you have your parents so yeah they just bought alcohol and then drank it straight because they didn't want to buy um chase for it they literally just want alcohol they want to get as plastered as they could and they had jobs they could do that it was their money it was their money to spend but now they're older when you get paid you have bills you have rent you know you don't have your whole paycheck to buy cheap spirits and drink them and get so drunk that you're throwing up and he's like I'm older now. I haven't done that in a while. Like, I have responsibilities now. And I feel like that everyone could relate to that because everyone has responsibilities now. When you turn 20, it's literally downhill from there. <laughs> Friend left to sell clothes. One works down by the coast. One had two kids but lives alone. One brother's overdose. One's brother overdose. One's already on his second wife. One's just barely getting by, but these people raised me, and I can't wait to go home. So, he's talking about how they were all friends. They spent all their time together growing up, but now they all went their separate ways. So, they don't get to see each other that much. So, going home, you get to see these people. You get to relive and reminisce and think about all the nostalgic memories and you know like maybe they'll still be there but like it shows you how everyone has a different path like one friend went to sell clothes you both ended up in the same spot one is a musician he is doing so well his other friend's selling clothes but he doesn't think of him like in my opinion he doesn't think of him any less like in their hometown they're all the same and they're all going home and they all raised him. They all made him who he was. And he's grateful for all these people. It doesn't matter if you work by the coast or if you're on your second wife. There's no judgment because you're all friends. You all started in the same spot. And that's what counts. And I find that's amazing. As Sharon's just so amazing. Like, he, the way he writes is just spectacular like he puts so much soul and I love that about him because it makes it personal it makes it relatable and I can't wait to see the next the rest of the album I can't wait for the music videos to come out uh, I want to know when he's going on tour because I want to get so bad <laughs> so bad I like when he opened up for Taylor Swift I saw him so that was plus but I haven't, I, I didn't stand for Multiply, and I totally regret not seeing him. I really did want to see him, but I, don't, I forget what the reason was. I think it was like, I, I honestly forget why I didn't see him in Multiply, but I'm not missing my chance for Divide. He is amazing. He is, hands down, the best songwriter there is right now. I know Taylor Swift is amazing and I'm a huge fan, but Ed Sheeran is number one, hands down. 
which I know I'll probably get a lot of hate from Swifties, because I'm a Swifty, but I feel like Swifties and Cheerios get along quite well because they're amazing, especially when they work together and they're friends, so hopefully I don't get much hate on this, so calm down everyone, stop being so mad, but yeah, that's basically it for this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. Accounts are linked down below. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and add me on Snapchat. I also have Tumblr, but I haven't really been on Tumblr that much lately. I'm not sure why, but yeah, I am in the process of making a YouTube-related uh, Facebook account, just so then I can link it there. So I decided to do a little outro, so hopefully it's not weird, hopefully, fingers crossed, but it'll probably be weird <laughs> just because I'm awkward. I feel like I'm a, like a potato all the time. <laughs> like a potato all the time.